Good morning, and welcome to worship on this 15th of November, 2020. I am Derek Ainfeld, the pastor here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Saratoga, and I'd like to welcome you to our 36th episode of our virtual distanced worship. Uh, we are in the tail end of the season of Epiphany, a season of growth. Our theme this morning is faithful stewardship. We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Good, gracious, and glorious God, once again we gather from far and wide to praise you for your living and life-giving word that convicts us of our sin and brings us comfort, hope, and inspiration. As we consider the holy stewardship you have entrusted to us, help us to be mindful of the privilege we've received to take part in your kingdom work. Lift our spirits in praise before you now, that we may faithfully respond to your goodness and grace, that our lives might bring you honor and glory this day and every day. Amen. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please enjoy some opening music played by Anton, Jesus Loves Me. for that rendition of Jesus Loves Me, uh, one of the most important things we will ever learn in our faith. Uh, the simple things are the most important at times. Well, we continue to gather in this uh, distanced worship uh, fashion because, of course, of the COVID virus uh, that continues to rage throughout our nation and throughout our world. Now more than 10.8 million people have been affected in our country. Uh, this is a 10% increase over what I uh, mentioned to you just last Sunday. 245,000 people have died in our nation and more than 1.3 million people have died in our world due to this virus. We continue to pray that uh, the, the vaccine that has been um, put together, created, uh, will be effective, um, that this virus will be um, put to an end soon. As we continue to go through this time, we do have several members of our community that have been afflicted by COVID. We will continue to pray for Dana, for Nora, and for Reed as they continue their recovery. Uh, just today, I heard from a member of our community of faith that she learned just yesterday that she had contracted COVID uh, back uh, in the past few months. 
uh, now is, is clear of it, but uh, had it and didn't even realize that she had it. So please take good care, uh, protect yourselves, and please be considerate of your neighbor. During this time of physical distancing, please do join us for live fellowship via Zoom. If you're watching at nine o'clock on Sunday morning, uh, right after this service, please join us for a time of live fellowship. Also during the week, we have opportunities to come together for Bible study, Wednesdays at 10, Thursdays at 6.30 in the morning. We would love to have you with us. If you have a prayer request you would like to have included in our prayers, please email me, let me know your request, and we would be happy to include that in our prayers on Sunday morning, as well as to add it to our prayer list uh, that is put out on the website. Uh, whenever you log into our website or go to the website, you will see names that populate on that prayer list. Um, so if you have requests, please do let us know. We continue to collect food and clothes here on site at Emmanuel in Saratoga. You can come by and drop them off at any time. Uh, we take that to places that will distribute it to those in need. We've received uh, many hundreds of pounds of food and uh, several dozens of bags of clothes um, this year. Uh, thank you for your generosity. And this coming Saturday on the 21st of November, uh, there will be a collection of frozen turkeys uh, here on campus. If you would like to donate a frozen turkey for those who are in need during this holiday season, bring them by between 9.30 and 11.30 in the morning this coming Saturday, and we will collect those, uh, and they will be delivered next Tuesday to a place that will distribute them to those in need. Thank you to Denise, who is coordinating this effort. And finally, thank you for your generosity, uh, your gifts given either online or through the mail uh, to our church. Uh, this continues to help us with the ministry that we are doing. Uh, it is a great encouragement. Thank you so very much for your generosity. And finally, if this service is of benefit to you, please feel free to share it with others. Uh, pass on the link uh, to the website or to YouTube and uh, share the good news with others. The scripture for today is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. These are the words of Jesus. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the one who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? 
Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The reading for this day. Dearly beloved of God, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. We might have some intuitions about it, glimpses, hints, insights about what it will be like and how things will operate. But we do well to listen to the one who has come down from heaven to tell us all about it. The one who has come to this earth to reveal to us what the kingdom of God is all about. Jesus teaches us to pray that God's kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. He teaches much about this kingdom of God. And because it is such a great mystery, Jesus makes use of story and parable to help us to catch on to, what, to how God's kingdom operates. In the parable before us today, I would like to take this in sections and with the hope that one section, perhaps one point of this parable might stick with you. Uh, for I think in the telling of the parable, Jesus touches on many different aspects about the kingdom of God. Some might pass right over you, but some might catch you. And perhaps that's where God's word will speak to you today. As Jesus begins this parable, he makes it clear that there are certain characters in the parable and a certain relationship that exists. At the very beginning, we should clarify, we should make clear that parables are not to be taken uh, so that we would see the master as equal to God in all respects. We cannot too quickly equate the master with God in this parable or in any other. For while there may be certain things about the master that are like God, they are not one and the same. So what does Jesus tell us about the characters in this parable? What can we say about God? What can we learn about ourselves? And what might this parable teach us about the relationship we have with God? Well, here in this rather simple parable, we learn about a master and his servants. We need to know our place, for each plays a part. We dare not skip over this section of the parable too quickly. Some of us simply need the reminder that we are not islands in and of ourselves, that we are neither self-made nor self-sufficient. There is the master, and then there are his servants. And there is the relationship that exists between them. It seems clear in this parable that Jesus reminds us that God is our master, that we are God's servants, and that that is the relationship that exists between us. We bow down, we are humbled before our God. Then, as the master in this parable is about to go on a journey, he entrusts his property to his servants. This master in the parable knows his servants well. He recognizes their abilities, he assesses their capabilities, and his judgment proves correct. We might say the very same things about God. Perhaps you want more responsibility in God's kingdom. The parables show you how you might get it. Entrusting is different than giving. That which is given to the servants in this parable is given in the safekeeping of stewardship. It is not given as a gift. 
that which is given in the parable never ceases to be the master's. It belongs to him from the get-go, and it is his all the way through the parable. Even so, as the Apostle Paul writes to the Church of God in Corinth, he reminds them of this holy stewardship that the people have before God, even with respect to their own bodies. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he writes, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, Paul says. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Well, this is a different understanding than what we hear in the culture today that says your body is your own and you can do with it what you like. Certainly the government has no right over our bodies, but if you are a follower of Jesus, your body is not yours alone. It belongs to God and has been given to you in stewardship. Take care of it, eat well, Get your rest, get your exercise, take good care of what God has entrusted to you. The master in the parable knows the abilities and capabilities of his servants, and he proves to be a good judge of their character. So also God with us. The next part of the parable gets into the industry or the stewardship of those servants. The one with the five immediately gets to it, Jesus says. He wastes no time. So also the one given the two talents. But the one with one, what does he do? He digs a hole and hides. He dug and hid. They all knew the relationship that existed between themselves and their master, that they were the servants their master was in charge. They knew that their job was to be servants of their master. But the five and the two went to work, while the one dug and hid. Then comes the day when the master returns from his journey. He calls them in and settles accounts with them. This might be called the reckoning. You entrusted I gained, said the one with five. You entrusted me with five. I have gained five more. So also the one with the two. You entrusted me with two. I have gained two more. I put your money to work. I put myself to work on your behalf. I have been of use to you as your servant. After this, come the commendations, the reasons behind it, and the outcome. For the first two servants, the one given the five talents and the one given the two, the response is the very same. As the master tells them in turn, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. They are both given promotions. They have been faithful with a few things. God will put them in charge of even more things. And they are invited to share their master's joy. They have taken part in his work, and now they are invited to share in the celebration. However, the one with the one, the one who dug and hid, for him, it is a very different story. As he is brought in before his master to that day of reckoning, he as much as accuses his master, you are a hard man, he says. There seems to be no understanding or appreciation of the relationship that exists between them. He seems put off by his master and put out by his request. There's no sense of anything having been entrusted to him, no sense of responsibility. 
You are a cheat, he tells him. And I was understandably afraid. So yes, I dug and hid. You haven't lost anything. Take what is yours. And from the master, there is no commendation, but there is reprimand and condemnation. You wicked, lazy servant. You say I was a cheat? You say I was a hard man? If you feared I would be displeased with the outcome, you should have at least been mindful to put the money in the bank. I would have received my money back with interest. I didn't ask you to hold the money for me. I could have done that myself. You have been worthless as a servant. You have been no use at all. I would be nothing but a fool to entrust you with anything more ever again. I did not expect much from you, but you could have put forth some effort to the outer darkness with you. You have chosen your own destiny. Wow. We hear those words of the master and we cringe. We do not want to be the one with one. We do not want to take that one and dig and hide. For this is not good news. It leaves us with a very bitter taste in our mouth. Not that it is the goal of reading scripture or hearing a sermon or listening to a parable of Jesus always to feel good about it. But we certainly don't want to be that guy. However, when we envision God as a mean-spirited, cheating master, the wrong vision to be sure, it's understandable that we might cower in fear and end up being of no use at all in his kingdom. So what might we learn about the kingdom of God in this parable? What is it that you will take home with you? With whatever God has entrusted to you, he calls you to be faithful with what you have been given. The finish line is not the same for everyone. The one with five, his finish line, if it can even be termed that, was five more. The one with two, his finish line was two more. It looks like God grades on a curve. But this is not, in the end, a salvation story. For we know that when it comes to our salvation, Jesus alone is the reason for it. Jesus alone is our Savior. This is not about salvation. This is about God's call to be responsible stewards in his kingdom, here and now and in the life to come. It's not a how you get to heaven story. It's what you do. It's how you manage and how you steward what God has given you. God has called you to be faithful with what he has entrusted. To recognize that all you have been given has indeed been entrusted to you and has been held in stewardship by you. So make the most of it. Do your very best. Participate in God's kingdom work and know that God can and does use your service for his good purposes. What privilege, what joy, what commendation to hear from God those words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come, and share your master's happiness. Those are all the words you'll ever need to hear. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we bow our hearts in humble adoration and we give you thanks and praise as we go about your work in this Pentecost season. We come before you lifting into your presence those who are in special need of your healing touch. We pray for Ashley and her sons at this time. We pray for Bob, for Dave, for Dick and Don, 
for Dorothy, George, and Kimberly, for Greg, Harriet, Jim, and Baskey, May, Patrick, Ruth, and Thelma. We thank you that you know the needs of all these, your servants, and that you are faithfully at work in their lives, even before we offer prayers on their behalf. We pray for our nation during this time of transitional leadership. We pray for those who have been afflicted by COVID-19. Especially we pray for Dana, for Nora and Reed as they continue their recoveries from this virus. We thank you for those who celebrate birthdays in our midst this coming week, for Aaron and Estelle, for Mary, Max, Pete, Rob, and Steve. We thank you for the gifts you have given to us in them and pray that you would bless them richly in the coming year with all that is good. Thank you also for Rod and Kathy as they celebrate 44 years of married life together. Continue to draw them close together in their love as you draw them close to yourself. We pray at this time for our president and vice president as they finish out their terms, that you would grant them wisdom, guidance, insight, humility, and strength. Thank you for their service. We pray for Holy Redeemer Church in San Jose and Pastor John, for the ministry taking place within and beyond their church walls, that you might be glorified in all that is done. For Kamel and Badia, serving as missionaries in the Middle East and North Africa, keep them safe, healthy, and bless their ministry to your glory. We pray for those families who grieve the loss of loved ones, including the Igabrod family, the Greenway and Campbell families, the Cabes, the Martins, the Mutches, the McCoys, and the Smaha families. Grant them the comfort of your presence, the assurance of your everlasting promises, and the hope that you give to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. All these prayers we lift before you, trusting in your mercy, joining together in the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us uh, for this service on this 15th of November. Uh, we invite you back next Sunday uh, as we will continue to be here and meet you here. Uh, this will be uh, the last Sunday of the church year, Christ the King Sunday, November the 22nd. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our postlude music, now thank we all our God. Thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing that with us today. God bless you. Thank you.